Okay, so now let's show you the pen and give you a few details about it and, uh, well, some specifications. Now, when I made this pen, I, as you people know, I'm actually a vintage fountain pen fan. So what I wanted to do is try and make something that, okay, resembles vintage. And, yeah, in my opinion, I, I think... I'm actually getting there. Personally, I think it looks absolutely superb. I've actually shown it to friends and family. Some, Well, they were all very much impressed, but they're not pen people. So it'd be interesting to see what you pen people think about the pen. So let's give you a few details. The size of it from the top of the cap to the bottom of the barrel capped, it's 142 millimeters in length. The barrel at its thickest in the middle here is around about 12 millimetres in diameter. The cap itself is 14 millimetres in diameter. And the pen itself from nib to the end here is 131 millimetres. The pen is made out of ebonite and this gorgeous green well, yes, it's a green lizard skin. I believe this material is actually vintage in its own right. I believe it's from around about the 1930s, around to maybe 1950s. It's a cellulose acetate. And I also believe it may be a Parker, you know, something actually to do with Parker themselves. But as we said, it's this green... Um, green lizard skin and I believe well I, I think the black with the green lizard skin matches very well as you saw earlier it's a button filler so again I wanted to make a pen based on a uh, sort of vintage filling system you can see to the top there it's got a Conway Stewart clip it's got this slight peak to the very top there which again I made um, I made the finial to the top, the cap there we made, slightly tapers towards the the clip there, there's a slight taper. Um, if I show you the the end of the the cap there, originally I, I made it so it was simply just a straight step. Now one of the comments that I actually got was, some people said, oh yeah, beautiful pen, love it. But I just don't like that step. So believe it or not, um, yesterday I put it back on the lathe. And what we did, we slightly tapered it. So you can see there, it's a slight taper to the very end very end of the, uh, the cap there. Let's go to the end of the pen. You can see we've got this blind cap. And that's just simply a plain blind cap. Again, a slight taper towards towards the end so let's unscrew the cap let's show you the pen in different angles and again I'm so sort of quite impressed with myself I, I think it looks quite nice I'm I'm very impressed with it personally again slight taper there the, the barrel tapers slightly down to the to the blind cap if we take you up to the sort of top of the barrel there, you can see it tapers again. You know, a slight taper towards the section there. Again, threaded there. You can see the section is just quite a plain tapered section. And again, to the very top there, we've got a gold Conway Stewart nib. To the back, this is actually the original Conway Stewart um, feed to the back there okay so the only things that I've actually repurposed um, is the feed the Conway Stewart nib and the Conway Stewart clip so some people will say yeah it's a franking pen well call it what you wish I call it repurposing absolutely gorgeous a lovely pen to hold, a nice size, as I said from the nib to the end there, 
around about 131 millimeters the 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 pen itself nice and comfortable to hold not a small pen again personally I like oversized pens so I was working and I will work towards towards slightly larger pens now let's unscrew the blind cap so there's a the blind cap as you can see and again we've got an AF aluminium filler <laughs> so there's the aluminium filler again it was made by me it was turned by hand you can see it's threaded it's got this little button to the top there and what we do we simply press it down to fill to fill the pen there's the threads but this green absolutely gorgeous this gorgeous lizard skin right what I'm going to do because believe it or not apart from sort of working a little bit on that the cap lip yesterday although I finished this pen I don't know when was it uh, it's Wednesday now I think I believe believe I finished it on Sunday it has not been tested it's not had a drop of ink in the pen so what I'm going to do I'm going to fill it and we'll do a little bit of writing so in effect we're testing it if you like live on camera so if there's any problems we'll see hopefully well fingers crossed they won't be but what we're going to do what you see is what I see it's the first time the pen has been inked and tested okay so you know there's no sort of washing washing over your eyes and pulling people's legs and saying yes it's great it works out great if there's a problem you will see it it's a hand made fountain pen okay so let me reach over and get some tissue let me reach over and get the ink and again for you people that don't know with it being a button filler we dip the section in the ink and we press down on this particular button here so let's do that let's pop it in the ink hey <laughs> I don't know if you could actually hear that but I could hear bubbling bubbling noises which is precisely what we want to hear so let's get the blind cap let's screw that back on and let's bring on my little pad and once again the first time the pen's been written with so it's the first time it's been filled it's the first time we're going to write we're testing it well again live on video so my first homemade pen made from sorry I've spelled that wrong ebonite and as I say the barrel is a uh, sell you don't blame me if it's spelled wrong as uh, acetate okay the acetate itself as I said I believe is 1930s you know maybe 1950s the pen itself um, it's not vintage it was made in 2019 do you know something <laughs> I'm so made up it's writing absolutely gorgeous incidentally I did smooth the nib as well I thought if I'm going to do it let's do it properly but it's writing absolutely beautiful does it have any flex to the nib so let's do some figure of eights
The answer is yes it does. It has a lovely flex nib. Now you might have noticed that while I'm doing this writing, um, I'm actually quiet because I'm so made up. It works. It writes absolutely gorgeous. It writes smoothly. It writes absolutely... In fact, I can't even think what to write. Let's do some... Bigger figure of eights. Okay. So, at the end of the day... Let's show you the writing sample. I think this is the first time I've sort of been speech speechless when I'm doing a writing sample. But there you go, there's a writing sample. Writing lovely, lovely and smooth. As you can see there, it's writing with a some flex to the nib. Again, some figure of eights. Again, some larger figure of eights. You can see some nice variations and a lovely smooth writer and at the end of the day I think that says it all I'm so happy with it not only does it work it writes absolutely lovely so let's put the cap on what we'll do we'll swill it out once off camera I'm so happy with it. The writing is absolutely great, beautiful, and I'm not really a writer, so somebody that writes, I'm so happy with it. And I think we'll leave it at that. So that is my first homemade pen. My first, hopefully, of many. They won't necessarily be this colour, this shape, etc, etc. I will be trying to base them on sort of vintage styles, maybe even vintage filling systems. There may be something that comes out which might be a little bit more modern. I don't like blingy. They will be slightly oversized pens because that's what I prefer personally. But hopefully they will just get better and better. So... I hope you've enjoyed looking at this pen as much as I've enjoyed making it and actually showing it to you people. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe as well. And last but not least, if you possibly can, down below, please support my work. But from me and my first beautiful over the moon with it fountain pen we'll just say bye bye for now